Walter von der Main currently serves as director for uh, customs brokerage at UPS Europe. In addition to spending 35 years with customs in different continents, Walter is a member of the European Express Association and the Customs Task Force of Business Europe. He serves as chairman of the Customs and Trade Facilitation Committee at AmCham and vice chair of its Brexit Task Force. He is a well-respected subject matter expert in different customs working groups from the European Commission. Our second speaker, Jean-Alexandre Linden, has managed for the past three years the brokerage department for UPS Switzerland, overseeing both export and import departments. Alex brings 27 years of UPS experience primarily in the finance and brokerage department in France, Switzerland, Austria, and Hungary. Alex plays a key role in developing UPS customers custom clearance setup, leveraging both UPS enterprise offerings as well as offering customized solutions. Thank you very much, Walter and Alex, being here today and sharing your knowledge and experience with us. I would like, I would like to hand over uh, to Walter now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, today, we will cover changes in customs and VAT legislation that will occur in 2021. This will be relevant for Swiss exporters, and I will start off with an update on the EU VAT reform. And after that, I will cover changes related to Brexit, and then we'll hand it over to my colleague, Alex Linden, who will explain how to ship smoothly to the UK and to the EU as from next year. So as an introduction, uh, today, the global supply chain is hitting heavy turbulence. COVID-19 has changed the way we, like, uh, we live like never before. It also has emphasized the strength and weaknesses of supply chains. It also showed how flexible and pragmatic customs procedures can help to react to extraordinary circumstances. Brexit is another unseen event that has a disrupting effect on global trade, dividing a single trade block into two. Also here, customs is at the forefront, introducing hundreds of millions customs decorations each year for both sides. And trade tensions are not new. However, the relationship between the EU, China and the US is challenging. Customs knowledge will help you to navigate through the restrictions and identify opportunities. As these major events occur, we need to look below the surface. Customs legislation is constantly evolving and needs to adapt to today's and tomorrow's reality. In order to know where we are heading, it is important to understand the drivers. We are moving to smart borders, reducing or eliminating any friction at physical borders. To do that, we need new technology and a big emphasis on trusted trader programs like AEO. New technology and e-commerce are game changers. And here also customs processes will need to be enhanced. Let us think alone about the complexity of return shipments in a customs context. Sustainability will drive new requirements and processes and all of this is impacted by data. Although there are increasing privacy restrictions to data, governments are also requesting more accurate, earlier available and more complete data. Knowing these events and drivers, now let's have a look at the changes that are waiting on us around the corner. Let's first answer the question, why are governments changing their customs and VAT legislation? That is mainly because domestic retailers are at a disadvantage against foreign e-commerce shops and marketplaces around the world. That is why there is a need for new rules so that duties and taxes can be collected more effectively, that there is improved customs control, and that there is a level playing field between all economic operators with comparable business activities. 
following figures speak for themselves. The EU loses every year, year more than 2 billion euro uh, on VAT collection because of valuation issues and another 740 million euro for IPR, intellectual property rights violations. The new rules will increase the cost of purchase because you're going to pay VAT on items where you used not to pay VAT on, but they will also provide better protection to the consumer, uh, as in enhanced safety and market conformity. And it will allow for wider market access, uh, as it will be easier to access global markets, particularly for small and medium sized businesses. Marketplaces will benefit from the new rules. They will be able to provide a clean all in checkout. The customer is going to know what he pays for. They will provide an optimal customer experience and benefit from green channeling. And last but not least, the return process will be easy and user friendly as opposed to now it is very complex and bureaucratic. So let's go into detail on what is going to change when you export from Switzerland to the EU. As from the 1st of July, 2021, following drastic changes will apply. For all shipments imported into the EU below 22 euro, VAT will need to be paid. Currently, you do not need to pay VAT and you can declare them by what the Union Customs Code, the European Customs Legislation calls by any other act, which is in most cases a simple manifest. That will be impossible as from the 1st of July, there is going to be a formal electronic customs declaration and that will apply. The European Union realizes that this will add a burden to importers and therefore has implemented new rules to facilitate trade, which are applicable for all shipments up to 150 euro, and which makes it possible for shippers to register and process VAT. Even better, business to consumer shipments with an intrinsic value below 150 euro, where the shipper is responsible for the VAT, <coughs> can be released at the first point of entry into the European Union. In essence, all these shipments can now be released by one customs authority and further distributed without further documentation throughout the European Union. Of course, there are going to be a lot of more customs declarations. Although the Commission has defined what they call a super reduced data set, which eases the burden a bit. However, the number of customs declarations into the EU will increase significantly. So for shipments imported into the EU, there will be two options. Or you can use the special, special scheme for distant sales of goods imported from third country territories. It's called the Import One Stop Shop or IOSS. Or you can use the special arrangements for declaration and payment of import VAT. And in that case, the VAT will still be settled by the importer. So here is a comparison between the current situation and the situation as from July 1st, 2021. There are two basic changes. Uh, now you do not pay VAT for items with an intrinsic value below 22 euro, as from the 1st of July, 2021 you will, and below 150 euro, the clearance process changes. I realize there's a lot of text on these slides, but I'm sure that we will distribute the presentation after this event. So how does the import of one-stop shop process look like? There's five steps. Step one, once registered in the EU ISSS, the seller marketplace will charge VAT when selling goods to consumers for which a place of delivery is within the EU. Step two, the seller marketplace will apply the correct VAT rate 
to all eligible goods at the time of supply to the customer. The time of the supply is the time payment has been accepted. Step three, the seller marketplace will show the price of the goods and the VAT value on the order. The customer will pay the total amount to the seller or marketplace. Step four, the VAT rate is the one applicable to the respective good in the EU member state where the customer is located, so where the delivery of the goods is indicated. And finally, step five, the seller marketplace will submit a monthly report with its transactions to one EU member state and pay the required VAT. The second big change in 2021 are the regulatory changes as a result of the UK leaving the EU. On January 31st, the UK left the EU. That was the start of the transition period that will last until the end of the year. For now, everything stays like it was before. In the meantime, the EU and the UK are negotiating a free trade agreement that will need to be ratified by the parliaments. The objective is to have this ready by mid-October. They also need to agree on the requirements for trade between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So what happens on the 1st of January 2021? If there's no free trade agreement, trade between the UK and the EU will be subject to WTO terms, the World Trade Organization. In any case, the UK will no longer be part of the EU's free trade agreements. So let us look into the before and after situation. Until now, the UK and the EU are treated as one territory where the same rules apply. The tariff, free trade agreements, origin, all are applied in the same way. As from the 1st of January 2021, this will be different. We will face the following reality. There will be separate rules when you export to the UK or when you export to the EU. And there's yet an additional complexity. In order to avoid a physical border between Ireland and Northern Ireland, there will be specific rules for movements between Great Britain, England, Wales and Scotland and Northern Ireland. So what does a no deal or a hard Brexit mean? There would be no preferential trading agreements. Um, goods imported from the EU to the UK and vice versa would be subject to tariffs. Some British made products could be rejected by the EU and border controls between the remaining 27 EU countries and the UK will come into place. Import duties mean barriers to trade. They result in higher prices, less trade. Mobility will be reduced and there can be significant disruption. Economic operators need to prepare for new realities. Instead of the smooth and frictionless trade we know today, there will be external borders and trade barriers. This will result in a longer life cycle of shipments and will require operators to validate if they comply with a set of requirements that currently do not apply. As the UK will no longer have access to the single market and the EU customs union, there will be custom declarations between the EU and the UK. There will also be an external border, which is a line separating two countries, administrative divisions or other areas. By definition, the existence of a border implies that it is controlled. No matter how inventive and creative high-tech solutions one might find, there will be a need to check what is passing through that border. Both the EU and the UK need to make sure that customs, trade, veterinary, phytosanitary and other restrictions and controls can be carried out. Instead of a trade union, there will be trade barriers. The UK will have its tariff schedule and the EU will have another. As an economic operator, you will have to know and apply different tariff schedules. You will also have to look at the price of your commodities as import duties will be levied. 
other elements that might impact your product prices are preferential and economic origin rules. Preferential origin provides you with the possibility to pay a reduced rate of import duties or no import duties at all. They derive from preferential agreements and for the UK, these will no longer apply as they do today. Non-preferential rules are used for all kinds of commercial policy measures, like for instance, anti-dumping duties, countervailing duties, trade embargoes, safeguard and retaliation measures, quantitative restrictions, restrictions, etc. Rule sets for the UK and the EU will be different. We will need to prepare for a longer life cycle of shipments. A shipment moving from the UK to the EU or vice versa will be subject to export, transit and import formalities. Other requirements cover customs warehouses. Either you will need to apply to open one or you will need to extend an existing one. And the same is true for authorizations or guarantees. You will also need to provide bill of discharges when you use special procedures. The UK has published its new tariff. It replaces the EU's tariff and will come into effect on the 1st of January. Compared to the current EU tariff, it simplifies over 60,000 tariff categories and rates. It provides a lower tariff regime than the current one and it supports specific industries considered strategic for the UK. As far as imports are considered, the UK will choose for a phased implementation. The first phase starts on January 1st, 2021. In certain cases, the declarant will have six months to submit the final custom declaration and safety and security declarations will not be required on imports until the 1st of July. As from the 1st of April, all products of animal origin and all regulated plant and plant products will require pre-notification and the relevant health documents. Physical checks can still be carried out at the point of destination until the 1st of July, 2021. And from that date on, full customs requirements will apply with safety and security de declarations and checks for certain commodities like animals, plants and their products at specific border control points. Important to know is that if you want to do business with the UK, you will need to have an ERI number, a VAT registration, and a customs declare. An economic operator registration and identification, ERI number, is a unique customs ID for business, will be needed if you wish to continue to import, export goods uh, to and from the EU and to the UK. The EORI numbers issued in the UK will start with GB followed by 12 digits and it will include the business VAT registration number if they are registered for VAT. An EORI number from the EU starts with different letters depending on the country that issued it. For example, one issued in France that will start with FR. And of course, uh, we've been uh, preparing for Brexit since uh, quite some time. So since December 2018, Seven, over 74,000 businesses in the UK have applied for and received ERI numbers from HMRC, the UK Customs. From August 2019, uh, further 88,000 VAT registered businesses who have previously traded with you have been also uh, auto enrolled. So businesses that are not VAT registered, that have a subsidiary company that also trades good with the EU, that are new or have commenced trading with the EU since the start of 2018, or already have an EORI number from the EU, will still need to apply online if they didn't do so already. In meeting the fiscal requirements, there are considerations for business in relation to VAT, Depending on where you import in the UK or the EU, you will need to have a VAT ID either by a consignee or by a fiscal representative. An importer of record or IOR, also known as the import customs declarant, is not the owner of the imported goods. There are the entity who becomes liable for the customs formalities. With this being key in terms of determining 
who becomes the responsible party for any customs liabilities, it is important to know which liabilities the declarant is responsible for. In order to act as a declarant, the EU subsidiary of the non-EU seller must be part of the sales transaction. And of course, a customs broker can also act as an IOR or declarant. The UK-Switzerland trade agreement will form the basis of economic and trade relations between the UK and Switzerland after the 1st of January 2021. And the UK-Switzerland agreement covers trading goods, including provisions on rules of origin, preferential trades and quotas, and on tariff measures. Geographical indications, these are the signs used to identify a product whose quality, reputation, or other characteristic is linked to the place it comes from, and government procurement. The agreement currently does not contain some provision commonly found in free trade agreements like services and intellectual property rights. The UK-Switzerland trade agreement is expected to take effect as from the 1st of January 2021. So you need to prepare for changes when the UK leaves the EU after the transition period, January 1st, 2021. You need to review and test your supply chain. You need to remove the UK when assessing origin of goods in your supply chain. There's no possibility for accumulation or triangulation, and there might be a need to adjust your IT or your inventory systems. The UK will be part of the Common Transit Convention, so goods can move under NCTS, the transit document, and as mentioned before, there will be a new tariff, and the total of duty-free tariffs equals 40% of the whole of the UK global tariff. So, similar but not identical to the EU, the UK has decided to eliminate the de minimis on VAT. That will start us from the 1st of January 2021. There will be a new VAT model for goods arriving into Great Britain, into the UK, from outside, to ensure that goods from EU and non-EU countries are treated in the same way, to ensure that UK businesses are not disadvantaged by competition from VAT-free imports, to improve the effectiveness of VAT collections on imported goods, and to address the problem of overseas sellers failing to pay the right amount of VAT on sales of goods that are already in the UK at the point of sale. This does not cover matters specified in the Northern Ireland Protocol. The Northern Ireland Protocol currently is still debated on how the requirements will uh, be uh, clarified. With reference to VAT for shipments below 135 Great Britain pounds, the VAT collection will be moved away from the UK border to the point the UK consumer purchases the goods. Online marketplaces will be involved in the collection of VAT, where they facilitate the sale to the UK consumer. Above 135 GB pounds, B2B importers will process import VAT in their own books outside of the low value program and the liability for the VAT remains with the UK recipient. So, summarizing, between zero and 135 GB pounds, VAT will apply and both in a B2C as well in a B2B transaction, it is for the foreign supplier to include VAT on his invoice to the buyer. And above 135 GB pounds in business to consumer scenarios, duties in import VAT will have to be paid with the customs declaration. And in a B2B scenario, the importer can defer the payment of import duties and postpone the VAT processing to his normal VAT declaration, or he can settle both with the import declaration. The first option obviously provides the importer with a substantial cash flow advantage. So let me conclude with giving you a couple of tips. Now that we have covered the prerequisites for traders and we looked at some of the changes that Brexit will bring, we will try to explain how to make your Brexit life easier. The good news is we can help you. Please have a look at our service offerings 
and the tools that we have available to enhance your processes and reduce the workload and efforts needed in preparation of the changes. We recognize that international shipping can be complex and costly, and one method of reducing complexity and cost can be to ship packages to multiple recipients within a one EU country uh, as one shipment that clears customs as a single transaction. Our UPS WorldE solution offers simplified shipment processing, reduces complexities of international shipping, and reduces multiple shipment costs. You can cross borders with confidence, extend your global reach, and optimize your supply chain, saving you two of your most valuable assets, time and money. Another method of saving time and money by simplifying your processes is to utilize our UPS paperless invoice offering. This tool promotes sustainability and eliminates the need for paper commercial invoices by integrating order and shipment processing and transmitting commercial invoice data to enable customs clearance. Customers can create and upload not only the commercial invoice, but also other documentation for your international shipments while also creating the shipping label. The advantage to using this solution is that it is not only minimizing any potential loss of important shipment documents, but also it provides faster customs clearance as documents are instantly available on upload. Paperless Invoice also provides you visibility of the forms in Quantum View software. There is no need for any additional software requirements. Classification for all your imports and exports using the correct commodity code to pay the right VAT, duty, excise, or levies is mandatory to complete the customs declaration to declare goods moved to and from the EU and the UK and third countries. The more proactive you are defining your products classification prior to shipping, the lower impact and delays you will see on your supply chain and your deliveries to your clients. Assigning the correct HS code to your goods and parts discloses the customs duty rate to be calculated and applies non-tariff measures leading you to apply for licenses, find out if restrictions apply, issue a certificate of origin, claim an export refund or similar duty saving schemes, control if your product is liable to excise duty, find out if reduced VAT rates apply, and identify any other customs obligation, such as quotas. Sandler & Travis Trade Advisory Service, a UPS company, ensures that all your cards and products will be classified currently, accurately, your paperwork audited, and duty optimization strategies can be managed thoroughly. Another tip is that customs require a plain language description uh, that is precise enough for them to be able to identify the goods. General terms like consolidated, general cargo or parts cannot be accepted. A couple of examples. Do not put phone, but mention the brand and the type of phone. Do not state clothes, but be specific. Do not mention car parts, but be more detailed. And instead of writing equipment, mention the purpose. Gifts should relate to what it is, for instance, a remote control car. And the description sanitary goods is too general. Instead, use towels, buckets, detergents, or toothbrushes. My last tip is that UPS has created an interactive tool to support you with completing effectively your commercial invoices. An invoice, shipping, customs, pro forma, or commercial is necessary process importing goods in the EU or the UK, uh, and there are mandatory fields to be completed with, as discussed previously, the HTS code, but also an invoice number, exporter and importer information, exporter VAT identification number, origin of goods, item name, description, quantity, invoice value, including the currency, and INCO terms. Incorrect or missing information is the most common cause for customs delay, so always be accurate in your invoice declaration. State as much as you know about the goods being exported and make sure your documentation clearly communicates the reason for your export. 
In the years following the UK referendum, we have been investing heavily in our workforce, infrastructure and operational systems to prepare our customers for the UK's departure. We've hired and trained new customs brokerage and operations employees. Our European air and ground network, which we have significantly upgraded and enhanced in recent years, is designed to provide maximum flexibility, especially in uncertain times. We have also initiated discussions with relevant policymakers in the UK and the EU and advocated for process and policy changes that reflect our customers' concerns. We have been preparing for a long time. However, we cannot do everything ourselves. We need you. As stated in the beginning, this is a team exercise. We need you to evaluate your potential exposure by examining your process flows and your supply chain setup. We will continue to communicate on Brexit and other regulatory changes and to brief you when new relevant developments occur. And with this, I hand it over to you, Alex. All this valuable uh, information, I guess we all learned a lot this morning and um, it's really much appreciated. So good morning again, I'm Alex, I'm uh, Lyndon. I'm, I will take you through within the next minutes through, the, through some slides about facilitating shipping from Switzerland to the EU today, right? And tomorrow to, to, you, to the EU and UK. And UK. Our, our approach is to determine how to facilitate trade with the EU and the UK and how some of the changes Walter spoke about today uh, will change process for, for our customers. So to start with, um, we spend quite a bit of time with each of our customers discussing their existing desired setup. And uh, the first question is always about uh, who is selling to whom, right? So we have here on the screen a kind of decision tree or decision matrix, whatever we want to call it, but uh, that helps us a lot to uh, arrive at the final details. So this is aimed at helping non-EU <coughs> UK shippers to validate uh, custom tax requirements when importing into the, into the EU or UK. So most of the time, to, be, to remain very simple, it's, it is always about three main subject matter, as already mentioned by uh, Walter before. It's always about the VAT, if you're registered or not registered. It's always about who is doing the clearance for you, are you doing it through your own subsidiary, through a broker with the declarant at the end of the day, and of course, what is very important to Europe and UK tomorrow also, uh, is to have a validate ARE number. Now, I will take you through uh, a few actual customer scenarios to show you how this regulation change might, might affect uh, your business. So here, we have a well-known designer shoes company uh, advertising via Instagram uh, on shipping B2C to Europe, uh, including UK, uh, through the web shop. They are using uh, UPS world is shipping system whereas the consolidated clearance is done centrally for all countries in Germany where UPS is acting as the IOR on behalf of the shipper. Um, with the Brexit, B2C shipments to UK won't be part of the consolidated clearance shipments anymore or any longer to Europe. So here we have, you have to think about uh, creating a new shipment flow, either single shipments or consolidated one directly to UK. <clears throat> and then, based upon you know, the commercial value we already reviewed before, or learned before, you may ship uh, with the Incoterm DAP or DDP directly, or you may use uh, as a shipper uh, import of record partner in the UK as your own subsidiary or engaging a, a broker. For the, uh, for the B2B, B2B shipments to Europe from UK, uh, now we are looking at an international company specialized in measurement technology using UPS World Shipping System, where the, country, where the clearance consideration is at the same point of entry in Germany for German and European volume. So the German volume today is import cleared through the 
what we are calling the CPC 4000, right? And the European volume is EU imported through the CPC 4200, including the UK volume. So the, the base of principle of this CPC 4200, the benefits is the VAT payment deferment or the VAT deferment payment. So tomorrow with the Brexit, there is some, some solution. And uh, one of them today, which will be used by this company, is to use their own, UP, their own UK entity to act as, uh, as an importer of record with their own ARE number and VAT number. A last example of a company based in Romandy uh, selling electronic devices to B2C across Europe. So this customer was starting shipping single shipments uh, to Europe with the Incoterm DDP, but my, migrated to UPS worded, worded shipment or shipping system, whereas the import consolidated clearance for EU B2C is taking place in France. For this purpose, the Swiss France subsidiary is acting as a fiscal representative, opting for the postponed VAT accounting. So tomorrow with the uh, European VAT uh, change from July uh, next year, um, the customer may opt for the, uh, based upon the commercial value of course again, based upon uh, of that, uh, can opt for the IOSS process for shipments below than 150 euros, uh, or continue to import on to, to declare goods as he's doing today. But note for the IOSS process, the customer has to register them themselves within the French authority here in that case. Thanks to our global experience, expertise, global network, uh, helping our customer to reduce risk and cost through the UPS custom brokerage offering. Here, all is based on these main six uh, subject matter pillars, the first one being the expertise. And we are custom experts, so you don't have to be. Errors or non-compliance can result in delays and penalties and damage your reputation. Minimize risk and maximize success by partnering with UPS as your international shipping broker. By getting to know you on your business, we strategize and implement your best global logistic solution. Consistency. Uh, this is through our brokerage on consulting and transportation service to ensure compliance on timely delivery by clearing 97% of shipments same day. Scalability. We adapt to all kinds of business, small to large. Customization. We help to navigate through all custom regulation with our UPS trade, co trade compliance management and solutions by customizing your brokerage clearance process. Technology. We combine our custom brokerage system with other UPS solutions for your organization, for example. We have the document imaging solution system providing easy archiving on a retrieval of important customs brokerage documents, which minimize the need for physical storage space and in case of customs audit. Also, various visibility tools to help you to stay in control with the shipment visibility notification and the ability to respond to critical clearance milestone to avoid delays and keep your shipments moving. Automation. Our systems are electronically linked to custom authorities all around the world, reducing the risk of errors and speeding up the clearance processes, including paperless invoice. Finally, customer optimization. Thanks to our global experience, trade compliance services, and global network, you reduce your cost through our custom brokerage offering. In conclusion, we are the experts, so you don't have to be. I hope the information provided today will help better prepare you 
for the upcoming regulation changes. Now, we will move to the question and answers with Robin Asherwood, Marketing for UPS Switzerland. All right, thank you very much, Alex, and uh, good afternoon to everyone. I will uh, moderate the Q&A portion of the webinar. Just wanted to let everyone know that we've received several questions from the chat, so what I will do is read them out and I'll call for either Alex or Walter to respond. Um, I do want to mention that since we won't get to all of the questions, we will definitely include them uh, in the posted webinar that you will receive um, by the 15th of this month, so just uh, Tuesday next week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so the first question is, is a tax representative still possible um, and necessary with the new IOFS. Um, so, Walter, I'm going to pass that question on to you. Okay, thank you, Robin. Uh, well, for, for the European Union, uh, as I showed into to the presentation, uh, there will be a different scheme whether you, uh, uh, you customs clear shipments in a B2C or a B2B transaction. I think that is the first uh, um, first difference we need to make. Uh, and then if you have goods below under 35, uh, 150 euro for within the EU, you can uh, register for the IOSS, the importer one-stop shop uh, system. So, that is, uh, uh, you can call that a tax representative, but it will be a much lighter, uh, uh, a, a lighter regime than the fiscal representative. If you go above uh, that uh, uh, amount, which is the intrinsic value of, of the good, then uh, you will uh, need to continue as you do today. So um, uh, there currently is not a, uh, a simplification for goods above uh, uh, 150 euro. Got it, okay, thank you very much. Um, the next question, what does UPS recommend to Swiss-based companies in the future? A, export through IOSS, yes or no. B, establish a unit in the European Union and get access to IOSS. Walter, I'm going to give that one to you too. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And yeah, uh, this is very uh, similar to, to the first question or the answer. The solution is, is uh, actually uh, very similar because you need to look at your supply chain. You need to look uh, who is your consignee um, uh, and, and you need to decide uh, uh, what what are what are the amounts of your transactions? If you if you really have uh, uh, only a, a lot of B two C transactions where most of the goods are below 150 euro, then IOSS is really uh, the, the the solution because it comes with a, a lot of advantages. You can uh, uh, you can release your shipments at the first point of entry. You give a monthly uh, declaration to one EU member state, uh, uh, so the, the the complexity will be be much simplified. But again, it's up to you to see uh, whether that really brings uh, benefits uh, or not, and that depends really on the type of business uh, that you have. Okay, very good. Thank you. Um, so the next question is. What is the exact offer of UPS to support export activities? Um, Alex, I'll give that one to you. Yeah, thanks very much for the question. And um, the exact offer is, uh, is multiple, right? So as we already learned today, uh, we are customizing your needs, right? That is why it's very, very important to understand your business, your supply chain, sitting together, listening to you, right, and coming up with the right solution. We have multiple solutions, we have multiple systems. Uh, we are here to help and to support you. Okay, good. Um, the next question, what do you recommend a company who exports uh, anywhere between 10 and 100 parcels per day? Alex, I'm gonna give that one to you too. Yeah, thanks very much again. Um, 
we went through some uh, some Swiss customer uh, example before through my presentation, and I talk a lot about uh, the shipping uh, system we are using uh, in Switzerland or in UPS in general, which is the uh, world is uh, shipping system, which is a consolidated shipment, right? And usually we are stating up uh, five uh, package a day. We recommend uh, heavily uh, using this world is shipping system. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, it's regarding the future UK GT harmonized code, will also the two or the four first numbers be the same as for the current World Trade Organization HTS codes? Um, and it says, if not, we as the exporter from Switzerland have to indicate the Swiss HTS codes for export custom statistics. And it's up to the UK broker to define the correct or I guess, it's, is it up to the UK broker to define the correct UK GT HTS code? A lot of acronyms there. <laughs> um, Walter, what do you say? Well, it, it, it will be even more than four. The first six digits are, 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 are the same. So uh, in, in, in that, uh, it will be quite easy to, to come up with uh, the, the, the correct HTS code for uh, the UK. And of course, it's very important, as I mentioned into my presentation, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that you refer to that HS code because that makes our life and the life of the importer much easier. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, let me take one more question. Um, so, Walter, I'm gonna give this one to you. Will it become cheaper to export in the future? Also here, I don't think I have a straightforward answer. Uh, definitely, uh, um, we, we need to see how this, this will materialize uh, in, in practice. Uh, um, what, what we see and what we don't like is that we see uh, very different uh, uh, import schemes into different countries. The Australia two years ago implemented a, a kind of a import one-stop shop system. The EU will do in July, in January, and the UK will do. And none of these three are the same. So for an exporter, it becomes, uh, uh, it becomes more complicated. Uh, uh, th that, that's the first part. Um, what the EU intends to do, uh, I think it's a good initiative uh, because if you if you have a web shop, uh, you can put your prices including VAT. There will be no surprises for the final uh, consignee. Um, there will also in the ISSS there will be no complex customs transaction. Um, you you just send one listing to one member state. Uh, and as I mentioned, you can release your shipments at the first point of entry. So there, there are uh, a, a lot of um, uh, advantages. On the other hand, we need to see how it materializes at UPS. We're still talking uh, to the EU Commission to make sure that it is really something that, that uh, companies can use and that does not end up again into something very bureaucratic, complex, uh, and and, and, and uh, something that's not really adding value to trade. So um, uh, to, to, to give you a short answer, uh, potentially yes, uh, but we will need to see when, when, when we start. Okay, all right, very good. All right, so that concludes um, the UPS and Handels for Bond webinar. But uh, before we go, I want to express a warm thank you to our speakers, Walter and Alex from UPS. Uh, the audience for your attendance um, and also the questions and um, also uh, to Nadine uh, from Handel for Van for the opportunity uh, really to present these relevant and timely topics um, with such an esteemed audience. Now um, I do want to point out that if you have, um, first of all, again as Nadine pointed out at the beginning, uh, we will uh, post this webinar to, to Handel for Van website um, on the 15th of September. Um, so please take a look. If we didn't get to your question, we will make sure to include the question and answer there, um, and those that we missed as well. And then if you have any further questions, um, if you are a UPS customer, please do reach out to your account manager 
Um, and if you're not, please do reach out um, and you see the, the email address here, chmarketing um, at EPS, and that's my department. We would be happy to um, facilitate any, any support that you may need. Um, yeah, so thank you and have a, a, rest, a good rest of uh, the week. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everybody.